Recently, I tested the 1,000-watt Stinger subwoofer amplifier. wasn't long before people were like, hey, won't you test a 2,000-watt version? I'm like, well, I kind of work for you people, so let's check it out. At the time of this video, there were still four models, 700, 1,000, 1,500, and 2,000-watt of the MT series. So we went to Amazon and picked out the 2,000.1 for 190 bucks. Check links in the video description for affiliate links that will help me if you use those to purchase. And today's video is not sponsored by Stinger, it is brought to you fully by me. All the opinions and thoughts in the video are mine. And don't forget, those who support me on patreon.com slash oldschoolstereo do get first viewing of all my videos. Here in the box, you'll see the manual which covers the four current monoblock models that we've already talked about. Also, you get a troubleshooting guide which gives you some tips and tricks. Also, system tuning for making your system sound better. Then we have the power certificate, which tells us how much somebody wrote in these numbers. I'm not sure <laughs> if each of these amps are really tested or not. I'll let Stinger let you know about that one. Also, we have the remote base cable, which is a very simple kind of a hidden style base cable that does have telephone style connection. And here's the little mount that goes on that base cable. If you want, I'll show quickly how to assemble that. But a lot of people like to use these in custom settings and pop out a panel or something. So you don't have to use this unless you really want to. Now in the 1000 watt version, Alan did send some keys, but in this one, he must have kept his keys as he's tired of giving them all away. But we did get some silica gel. Let's toss it away. What the hell? Here we have the Stinger MT2000.1. Very basic looking heat sink. But uh, yeah, most of the times people are going to hide these, so it doesn't really matter, I guess. On one end of the amplifier, we have a power protect LED. We also have the remote connection for the base knob. We have input, and we have bridge in and bridge out. This amp is strappable also with RCAs. And we have the gain control. We have low pass filter, 180 down to 40 hertz, subsonic 0 to 50 hertz. Also has a variable frequency and boost up to 12 dB between 30 and 80 hertz for the bass boost, so that's kind of cool. On the opposite side, we have four different terminals for speaker outputs. These are eight gauge. Let's talk a little bit more about those. Remember, just because an amp has two outputs, in this case, a mono block with two outputs, doesn't mean you have to use both. You can literally just use one positive and one negative if you'd like. You have the option to hook up two, if needed, with two subwoofers or a single dual voice coil subwoofer, but you get the same amount of power. It just depends on your impedance. Thanks for that PSA. We do get that question a lot, so I thought I'd throw it in. You also get zero gauge inputs for power and ground and a remote terminal there. And then we're gonna show you the guts of the amp. Psych! <laughs> You'll see that later. Now, the most impressive thing to me about this amplifier is the size. Look at this thing compared to a cell phone. It's like, what, this thing is 2000 watts? I decided to get out some of the other amps, the Double Rock, also the Recoil, to show you the difference between the size of this amp, and look at it. It is not really much bigger than the 1000 watt model that we showed before. But speaking of dimensions, let's go ahead and give you those numbers. 12.4 inches for the length, 6.1 inches for the width, and 2.1 inches for the height. Stinger rates this amplifier 800 watts at four ohms, 1500 watts at two ohms, or 2,000 watts at one ohm. Also, if you strap the amp with another one, they rate it at 3,100 watts at two ohms. Now, very odd, we had an insertion problem with the RCAs. Let's find out about it. These RCA jacks were a little small on the insert side. I don't need any eighth grade boy jokes. This is not a Mickey Mouse program. Got an issue with these RCA inputs. I don't think I've ever seen this before where you can't insert now this one I've opened up a little bit, but look at these, you can't push the RCA in. It's like the hole in the middle is not dr uh, drilled out enough or something. I kind of forced this one because I wanted to do this instead of using my good RCAs, but I don't know what's up with that. That definitely is some kind of a manufacturing problem with the part. I've tested hundreds of amps before, and I can't remember this ever happening before where you could not even enter, insert the RCA cable into the jack. But I talked to some friends who've been in audio for a while and they say, yep, this has happened to them before. So apparently it's nothing out of the ordinary. It does happen. But in this case, it just surprised me. 
Okay, we now have the amp hooked up so we can fire up the amp dyno and find out how much true power we can put out from this amp. If you haven't seen these tests before on the left is the power output in watts. The middle we show the ohm load, the right shows the voltage of the dyno. Now we'll also have the remote clamp display up here showing the DC amp so we can calculate efficiency. This here's my favorite part. Now the amp dyno test you're gonna to see today is a resistive load which is not the same as a reactive load, which is what a subwoofer or speaker puts on an amplifier. However, the tests here are gonna be accurate to show the true output power capability of the amp, but doesn't mean the numbers you see on the screen are what you're gonna see in your vehicle. Just so you know, PSA from Big D. Big Dummy is full of facts and PSA information today. Let's move on to the four ohm test is rated 800 watts. We're gonna send it the 40 hertz signal and we get 906. 14.54, so just a little bit high on the voltage there, not too much, a tenth of a voltage, tenth of a volt higher. Uncertified to clipping, let's see what we get here, pretty much exactly the same, <laughs> 905 at 14.44. Now we'll reset the dyno here for the dynamic pulse tone, let's see what we get, a little bit more, not significantly more though. 912 watts and jumped to 919 at 14.7. What about efficiency? We measured 87% efficient at four ohms. Don't you just feel green thinking about how much efficiency your amplifier has? Okay, not really. Two ohms monos, rated 1500 watts, 14.4. We will do the certified test first to 1% distortion. And we got 1465, so we were close, but not quite there. 14.34, this time we were a tenth of a volt under. We did use the AGM bank this time, not lithium, because we didn't want the high 14s you guys would be complaining. And this is nonsense. So let's try uncertified to clipping, and yes, we do get that 1500 watts, 1516 at 14.2. 14 Dynamic, send that pulse 40 hertz tone into the amp, and yep, Easily over 1600 watts, 1642, 14.56. Efficiencies dropped just a little bit, 78% at two ohms. Next up, we're gonna wire the amp for one ohm mono. This is where it's rated 2000 watts for this little small amplifier. Can it possibly do it? Certified test first, 1% distortion. Yes, it can, 2183. At 14.3. Now we're going to try the uncertified test of clipping. Can we get more than 2183 watts? Oh, yes. 2330. 30, 30, not 33. 2330 at 14.11. Now, dynamically, look at this. We're pushing into almost 3000 watt range. 2934 at 14.6 volts. And efficiency took a hit, 67%. Not winning any efficiency awards here, but not too bad overall. Here are the results you can see, including the eight ohm test. Welcome to pauses if you'd like to take a quick gander at all the different results. Next up, we're gonna hook this up to the quad box. Find out, can we make those squares flex? We have the Stinger 2000 watt amplifier hooked up the kicker quad box. We're gonna try some three kinds of bass. Watch it flex, we'll see how much power we get. Here we go. Woofer test, I just tried this a minute ago and everything is falling off the walls, but let's try it again. Here we go.
amp had no problem powering the 412s. And a quick shout out to Basitronics for Bass I Love You Too. This is an awesome song. Make sure you support Basitronics if you can. This guy makes some awesome bass music. I was also kind of amazed at the low temperature of this amplifier after all the dyno tests and the subwoofer test, the outside of the amp didn't get over 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Now let's open up this amplifier and find out what's inside. Flip over the amp, take off the six screws on the bottom plate, and then we're gonna take a look at the guts. Here we go. This amp was designed in-house by a Stinger engineer, uh, formerly of RE Audio. So this is not a design that you'll see in another amp at the time of this video at least. Here for capacitors you'll see these 1500 microfarad 1000 volt odd caps, which are probably generic. 3300 microfarad 35 volts on the power supply side. And yeah, overall, it packs a lot of punch inside of this really relatively small, about 12 inch long amplifier, which you can pretty much hide anywhere. And it stayed cool, so that was what was impressive as well. So next up, let's talk about the pros and cons of this amplifier. First up, the good stuff. Small footprint, rated power plus. It is available online. You can use my link in the video description to purchase off Amazon. Variable subsonic, variable bass boost and frequency. It does have the bass remote included. It is linkable, or some people call it strappable, and it stayed cool during the test. Things to be aware of, standard RCA is yes, there were RCA jack issues. I showed that earlier. Bass remote features, there's not a whole lot going on. It's just a bass knob. The level of the bass knob, it turns up really fast, so be ready for that. It's kind of plain looks, but you know what? If you don't need something to show off, just want something that works well for an incredibly good price, check out this Stinger MT2000.1. Links are in the video description as well as other amplifiers I like at this price. But thanks as always, you guys, for watching. Till next time, no big D is. I'm out of here. All right, I know you guys like to see extras at the end of the video. Well, if you make sure you're subscribed, make sure you click that thumbs up. I will play you below one ohm test. I'm just going to wait for you to do what you need to do. Then I'm going to show you. Done it yet? All right, here we go. Of course, it's not recommended to do what I do, but I do these tests just for you guys to find out. And we're going to try 0.8, which again, this is a resistive load, which is crazy on an amplifier to go underneath the rated uh, load, at least for a certified test. But we're going to try it and see what we get here. Hopefully, we don't blow the amp up. Twenty four hundred and five watts at fourteen point two four, and just for kicks, we're going to try this amp at point eight dynamic. Not sure if it'll go into protect or not. We will find out. Thirty four hundred and seventy one watts at fourteen point five volts. So we tested the 1000 watt Stinger amplifier before and tried the 0.67 dynamic and it went into protect. 0.67 dynamic, don't blow up. Okay, so just as before, it went into protect and came right back out because the blue light is back on, so we're good. So the amp has good protection circuit built in and it can handle or it can handle these quick bursts like this so it knows when to shut down when it needs to. So it's good, really good.